Hello, this is Raylene with Roots Restored Wellness. I hope that everyone is doing okay. There's definitely a lot going on, which is why I wanted to do a quick live today to just address any questions that you might have about what's happening and also to give you some updates so that you know what to expect, what to expect when life is going crazy. So I wanted to read, to start off with Revelation 21, one and then just part of two it says then i saw a new earth a new heaven and a new earth the first heaven and the first first earth disappeared and the sea vanished and i saw the holy city the new new jerusalem coming down out of heaven so we're in the process hey ladies of a new earth forming this is biblical for those of you who are skeptics here go read revelation 21 it says literally a new heaven and a new earth the first earth disappeared. So what does that mean? I've talked a lot about timeline shifts before. So we are going through a process of ascension. Yeshua ascended. So again, that's biblical as well. And for us to do that, we have to upgrade our bodies. We cannot be this toxic person and vessel and expect to move over. We would not, we would perish. We would not be able to do this. And so I've talked a lot about so many of these concepts. I'm going to bring them together a little bit in this video and integrate those with some of the symptoms you're experiencing. Yesterday, let's talk about the sun. We had three M-class solar flares, quite a few C flares. Those are minor, there's A, B, C flares. They're, it's like dust now. You're like, oh, some C flares. They're just so common that we don't even pay much attention to them anymore, which is not normal. Normally we don't have this much solar activity. M-class are pretty significant flares. We had three of them yesterday. Today we've had an M3.0 flare, I believe, and seven C-class flares. The sun is in alignment for an X-class flare, possibly. And I'm probably not the best person to explain this so you can do more research, but we are, the earth is bioelectric, magnetic, there's ether, there's plasma, all of these get charged and the sun can assist in that process. So when we get these intense energies coming from the sun, it changes the earth. Thus, we may notice a lot of severe abnormal weather. We're seeing that in the United States, lots of weird tornadoes and extreme hail weather going on. This is normal with these intense solar activities. Earthquakes, I think we had a six point something somewhere yesterday. Volcanoes erupting. So that is to be expected with intense solar weather. The, when the sun pops off a solar flare, it will send plasma energy coming to the earth. The time in which that hits the earth could be anywhere from instantaneous to on average three days. We are expected to get some intense solar plasma hitting the earth today through Sunday. So it's gonna be an intense weekend and if an X-class flare goes off, it could get even more intense. It's nothing to fear. Our bodies are made to handle this. However, our electronics may not. So there could be some damage to electronics, possibly if there's extreme flares, but generally I haven't had any personally damaged yet with all of this extreme weather, but it is possible. I'm just throwing that out there. We're also in mercury retrograde. That's a three week period. We're in the middle of it right now and it tends to cause disruption in electronics. So if you're wanting to throw your electronics out the window right now, have some patience. This should pass in about a week and a half and things will start to settle down there. But this backwards motion of mercury is a time for us to reflect on the past, go backwards and do some healing where maybe we have skipped over it in the past. People will ask me if I'm new age and I'm like, well, what do you mean by new age? The Bible talks about the coming of the new age. I just read that there's a new age of the first earth coming, new heaven. Isn't that a new age? So I don't, I think people say that as an insult. I don't know what you mean by that, but, um, new agers typically don't believe in darkness and evil. And you should hear how much I talk about and how much spiritual warfare I do. I absolutely believe in that it's happening. There are dark forces working against good forces. That's just duality. <sighs> Let's go back to talk about the Schumann Resonance. If you follow my page or if you're on Telegram, I post a lot about the Schumann Resonance. 
It is essentially the heartbeat or frequency of the earth. Baseline is 7.83 hertz. However, our new baseline seems to be more closer to 8.5 or higher hertz, so we're rising up in energy. What this does to our bodies is we may have had a homeostasis at the 7.83, feeling fine, life's good. When the energy pops up and it remains at an elevated level, what was once stabilized and at a homeostasis level for us is no longer in balance. So for us to become balanced, we have to shed some of the old so that we can rise up to the new frequencies. Otherwise, we will be having a very difficult time. This is why I talk a lot about taking care of your body, mind, soul, and spirit, because that helps us raise our vibration so that we are not in disharmony with the Earth's frequency. The Earth's frequency is continuing to rise. We have had a ton of light coating coming in, a lot of higher blasts of energy. Those act like a pressure washer for the body and it goes and it loosens things up. They surface, you get all these new symptoms and then you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm dying and I'm so sick, what's going on? Well, you were just blasted by intense energy moving this stuck stagnant low vibration energy up to the surface of your body and then it's up for you to clear it by doing different, there's many different ways that you can clear it, but anything that will raise your vibration can help you clear this. So you can look at the Schumann Resonance, the codes that go from the top to the bottom that are pure white or multicolored, those are usually light codes, but for me, they've also symbolized timeline shifts. So we will talk about some timeline shifting. Let's get into Okay, there is also a Pleiades portal open that from May 16th to the 21st-ish. There's different reports on different dates, but that's what I found. This is sending in a lot of blue healing light to us. Pleiades are the Seven Sisters star system. It is part of our universe. And this is when people talk about New Age and they're like, oh my gosh, you're talking about Mercury retrograde. How occult of you. Well, I'm sorry. Everything is energy, and so when the sun sends off solar flares, that's energy. That energy impacts us. When the planetary bodies are moving in specific ways, it changes the energy pattern and flow of in the way that it's influencing us. It's not a cult to talk about that. It is science. If you have something moving very fast and it collides into something else, there's going to be a reaction. You can't say that, oh, this, this, a colliding of energy is a cult activity. It's not, it's science, it's what's happening. It's reality, it's energy vibration. Frequency, you go study Nikola Tesla and he knew what he was talking about. I, I talk, addressing this because I get a lot of people that are very like negative and dismissive and I was once this way, so this is, I know the other perspective of it, but we're going to really struggle if we wanna keep a blind eye to what's happening and try to ignore what's happening with the planets and the sun because we think that it's dark energy or evil or something, even think or talk about it. So what are some of our symptoms? If you're having symptoms, please share what you're experiencing in the comments because it does help others that, you know, maybe they can resonate with what you are experiencing and they may not feel alone. There's a lot of heat coming in. So you might have sweating, dizziness, headaches, insomnia, GI issues. So no appetite, really full appetite, weird cravings, anxiety mixed with peace at the same time. It's kind of a weird feeling. Or feeling like some this excitement, but then you're at peace at the same time, knowing something big is coming. A lot of sinus issues going on, which is part of our detoxing. When these intense energies come in, it pushes us to detox and clear out toxins. And if you have done any bit of research and your head is not in a hole, you will know that we have been completely blasted with chemicals and toxins from all angles for our entire lives. Everything we breathe, we eat, we walk on, we wear, it's just toxic chemicals everywhere. So we are purging these in a mass level right now. And I will say it's probably not fun. The better you take care of yourself, eat the cleanest diet you can, drink lots of water, try to avoid stressful situations, take care of your mental health. This is going to assist you in smoothing this out and being able to ride these waves with ease. Are you on the surfboard or are you getting tumbled in the rocks right now? Your what you're doing to your body, eating, your sleeping habits, all of this physical stuff is going to determine whether you're going to have a smoother ride or a really rough, 
abusive, like toxic ride that's gonna rough you up a little bit. <sighs> there are a lot of emotions surfacing right now, including past life memories, which is really cool. We are essentially this, we had a really huge lunar eclipse that happened on Sunday and it was a blood moon, a flower moon, just amazing energies coming in, but a huge light and dark force collision happened during that eclipse. And the eclipse is a time to reveal what's behind the veil. So I saw this as a clearing of the fog, clearing of the veil, lifting that so we can start to see where the darkness is. It's no longer able to hide out. Biblically, in Revelation, it mentions, and I've read this before, that the darkness will be hiding in the caves trying to flee and get away, yet there's nowhere for them to escape anymore. You can't escape in a cave from the frequency of the earth rising. It's happening. And so either rise up or you're going to get sucked down. I'm having some really amazing past life memories. It's connecting in with a lot of my physical symptoms, the emotional issues I've been dealing through in this lifetime. And I hope to share about it soon, but there's so many different pieces connecting in. It's just mind blowing, unbelievable. And I will say most of you probably, if you've been here for a while, like multiple lifetimes, have some hallmark lives where there a lot of your karma and a lot of the symptoms and problems you're having stem from that one or two different things. You made a soul contract, you bound your soul to someone or something. Maybe you have some, like for me I was finding I was woven up in a lot of black magic and occult energy from past lives that I'm having to clear off and make right. And it all makes sense. It's just like all these pieces flooding in faster than I even know what to do with them. So if it's happening for you, it's exciting. I think it's exciting because when these things surface, so say that you have lung issues surfacing, don't freak out. Obviously do what you need to to treat it, but go within and ask, okay, what do I need to clear out of my lungs? What is surfacing that is brought to my attention as a blessing that I can clear and try to visit those situations with gratitude. A lot of people are having Okay, let's go back real quick. So we are working to clear karmic de debt and closing these karmic cycles, these trauma loops we've been caught in. This feels like a big lifetime to do that. Ancestral traumas, um, ugh, there's so much there, but I feel like what a time to be alive when we can be the ones to start clearing this out. It's phenomenal, so exciting. All right, let's talk about GI issues. I know that so many people are struggling with GI. This goes back to our solar plexus, which is your abdomen, abdominal area. And we are being called to re reconnect with the source, the sun, S-O-N, S-U-N. This could be your Christ consciousness energy, the source creator energy, and reconnect to the light. There are a lot of clearing of toxins comes out of the GI system. So it's very normal. When I've been looking at clients, I'm seeing a lot of blue energy in the GI system a lot, which tends to be stagnation, you're holding on. So you need to give your permission, yourself permission to flow and release. And then I'm seeing a lot of green energy. I wanted to talk about this last week and I didn't get a chance, so I'm going to now and I didn't even have a chance to look it up. But I'm seeing a lot of green energy in the abdominal cavity. What this means is you're, you're working through the grief cycle. And I don't know the whole grief cycle, but I know there's grief, there's anger, and then eventually it ends in acceptance. I went through this in the last like four to three weeks. Not the funnest thing, but it is good when you come out on the other side. What betrayals, losses, heartaches are you experiencing in this life? and maybe even past lives or ancestral that are surfacing that you need to clear. You need to go through that grief cycle. So give yourself permission to cry it out, whatever you need to do to go through that. Feel the anger, um, don't harm anyone while you're doing that, but however you need to let it go. Scream into a pillow or write it out, burn something, um, whatever. Give yourself permission to work through the grief cycle. We are working through that. My son, Gavin, is very gifted and he's been sharing different stone picks with us for the week. He's been doing it for about five weeks now. And the stone he picked three weeks ago was rose quartz, 
which is very closely connected with our heart. For us to grieve and go through the grief cycle, we have to open our hearts and give us permission. And then the stone he picked the previous last week, I think I'm all right on this. Maybe I'm a week off. But he picked green calcite, which is associated with our throat chakra. And it's very important for us to go through the grief process into stepping into who we are is to be able to have permission and feel confident in speaking our voice and our truths. You can literally get throat cancer and all kinds of problems, thyroid issues, if you are not speaking your truth and you're holding back from who you really are. So that was last week's so we were invited to step into that. And then let me see if I can find out what he shared for this week. I feel like it was a heart stone again. Oh, come on. Okay, this week was green calcite, which also connects in with our heart. Next week, he is picking his stone pick, which I haven't shared yet, is malachite. This one is associated with the throat and the heart. So it's now time for us to connect our inner voice, our truth, into our heart center. And that is going to give us a platform for grounding and to be who we really are meant to be. Speak with vibrancy, speak with heart, speak with love, clarity, truth, wisdom, but have that open softness and tenderness. So you can follow his page. It's called Messages from Within. Super sweet. He's only 11 and he's out there, you know, changing the world and sharing his gifts. So you'll see a lot of heart and throat chakra activations. Let this flow. I've also talked about this before. Our DNA is literally transforming and shifting for us to be able to go to this newer heaven, new earth. We have to reactivate what scientists call junk DNA and Put that back online, fill it with light, activate it, get connected in with who we really are. I look at our DNA right now as two strands as being imprisoned. We were locked away from who we really are, our memories and our true gifting by dark forces. Part of it was our choice for on some timelines. And now it's time to reunite with that, reconnect and reactivate it. So this detoxing, upgrading, these uncomfortable symptoms are working through that. You are not going backwards. You're not relapsing. You are moving forward. And a lot of times forward momentum, they say no pain, no gain, right? You have to go through the muck to get to the other side. And so that's what we're doing right now. Everyone will be experiencing this journey slightly different. So you may not have the exact same symptoms as 20 other people, yet there could be hundreds who have the same symptoms as you. It is different. It is waves. If you have had wherever your weaknesses are in the past, most likely that will be surfacing again for you. Unfinished business that you've refused to deal with, probably surfacing again. And the more you push it down and ignore it, the more severe and intense your symptoms will become. So please let this flow and face it. If we don't face it, we're gonna have some serious problems. We will get sucked down and drug under and you don't want that to happen. In addition to all of this internal work that is happening, and I will say for me, I pretty much only focus on the internal I pay attention to the solar energies, what's going on there, my clients, my children, obviously. But there is a lot of external chatter and chaos going on in the world right now. And it's trying to take our focus off this internal path and journey to get aligned with the light, step into who we really are, step into our sovereignty, connect back with the source, reconnect and repent and forgive, do all that work. It's trying to distract us. And so you have to learn to quiet the fake news, all the lies that are out there. What are they starting now? Monkey pox. Oh my gosh, you should be so terrified. The last narrative, the con vid thing is no longer working. So now we need something new. They tried to start this last year and I worked on stopping it when they had this truck of monkeys that crashed. I think it was in Philadelphia. I might be wrong on that. And then it was supposed to start this monkeypox thing last year. 
well, that fizzled out and the news stories were all over the place. They couldn't keep their story straight. So now they're trying to revisit the old narrative again. So please don't fall for it. Um, if we have a higher vibration, we can rise above all these timelines, even though they just seem like mindless, annoying chatter happening below. But so don't let that suck you in. The Roe v. Wade stuff, the what else is going on? Food shortages, financial collapses. It's just going to keep getting worse. Um, plant a garden. If 50% of people planted a garden, we probably wouldn't have any worries about food. I get more eggs than I could know what to do with. I freeze dried like six dozen or seven dozen yesterday. Um, so, you know, get some chickens, get some, you know, go learn how to wild forage. There's 30 herbs that grow on my property and I don't have, I have less than two acres. So learn to do that. You can make your own tincture super quick and easy. I was just pulling weeds out of my rock beds and I was harvesting some of those to make tinctures with. This stuff grows all around us. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, I can't get this medicine and what am I gonna do? It's probably growing close to you in a meadow, in a yard, somewhere. Everything you need, it's right there for you. We don't need to fear. And they're trying so hard to get you stuck in fear, 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 fear. Fear this, fear that, that didn't work, let's fear over here. And so just take a breath, go within and focus on this now moment. Right now, are you okay? It's very, very moment, not five hours from now, 10 weeks ago, right now, are you okay? And that's what I do when I start to feel overwhelmed or anxiety or depression. I just go to the center and say, right now, am I okay? Yes, I'm okay, everything's good, They're, we're fine. And if you're going through a trial, can I handle this one minute at a time? And can I see myself at the other end of it, coming through and being stronger? My little baby, she's so sensitive to everything, and so we have a lot of challenges with her, but I see each of these challenges that her delicate body faces as making her stronger and more resilient to be on Earth. So we need to connect in with gratitude through these experiences because they all make us stronger. Just like our past lives, we may have done some really horrible things and made some really bad choices connected to darkness, yet we don't have to choose that path now. And this is a time where we can set that right and release that bondage, ask for forgiveness, repentance, um, try to make amends and clear the things that we did or to harm other people. Nothing is beyond help. Nothing is helpless. Or hopeless it may feel like that but it's truly not it is very very important for you to stay grounded into the light connect with our source creator of unconditional love I don't know his name or I feel like it's a you know just like a energy that's just pure peace and love and that's where we originated from in our soul energy we need to stay connected to that because it's going to help you elevate and rise above a lot of this chatter, this negative energy. It will help give you a place to connect to when you are going through the storm and when you are going through the waves, when you're at the, you know, the trough of the wave and it feels like you're in the pit. And then I promise you, you're going to come up again. And then we're going to go back down because there's more to clear and then go back up. This is think of waves. So very important to stay grounded to the light. If you're not anchored in the light, you're going to be finding yourself stuck in drama, chaos, helplessness, hopelessness, overwhelm. You will feel like you are getting sucked under. If you can assist others, if you feel grounded and solid yourself, please do that. Please ground yourself and if you can help others. Others are not always ready for help. So don't push yourself on them. If they're not ready and receptive to come out of the indoctrination boxes or whatever it is, you need to just let them be. You can send them, you know, good energy. But for me, with those people in my life right now, I have chosen to just step back because I've offered so much guidance, so much support, so much, you know, I've planted the seeds and now it's their choice whether they choose to let the seed, you know, wither away or let it blossom. Sometimes there's nothing left to do but pray for them and send them, you know, positive, loving energy. 
And so do, if it's going, if helping them is going to interfere with your journey or your mental health, then it's probably, you're not in a place to assist. So just know that. Um, a lot of us feel like it's our job to save the world or our job to save everybody and help everyone. You cannot assist others on the flight with your, you know, when, with air mask, they say put yours on first before you help others. So we need to make sure that we have our air mask on before we are assisting others and we're strong and rooted. If you're trying to pull someone up out of a hole, if you're not rooted, when they put weight on you, you're gonna fall in with them. So just remember that. I'm not telling you to turn your back on people, but sometimes having them watch you flourish and thrive is enough to get them to say, hmm, what are they doing that seems to be giving them a lot smoother ride than I'm on right now? I wanna get off this one and I wanna be on that one. Okay, so just feel it, you know, let go. It's not your job to rescue everyone. It's not your job to save them. We are on our own journey. And ultimately our connection to source is the only thing that's gonna save us. No one else can make us have that connection. So it is an individual journey, even though we are all connected. All of us, I feel all of our souls came from our source creator of unconditional love. And I say that because if you say God, what one of the millions or billions of gods are you talking about? And I will say that the dark side loves to use implied consent. If they think that you've given them like any little millimeter of consent, they will take over and take that as an invitation and open door for them. So I don't, I try not to leave any stone unturned when I am talking about our source creator. I'm not gonna talk about random gods um, because people who are stuck in a religious box want me to say it that way. <sighs> okay, anything else? If you have any questions, let me know. Um, timelines, we are shifting to higher timelines right now, ideally. If you're not grounded in the light, if you're still stuck in you know, boxes of indoctrination, you're probably gonna be feeling yourself getting pulled down right now. And ultimately, how far are you gonna let yourself get pulled under until you choose to step out of the box and let go of the chains and the bondage and the false programming? That's up up to you honestly it's really hard to step out of that but many have done it i've done it and i know that you can too what let me just say this briefly about the timelines because it's very confusing when i talk about timelines think of this as parallel universes we may be living multiple lives stacked on top of each other and many of the lives you might have the same job or the same family, maybe little shifts here or there. The goal is to be at your highest timeline at all times. However, we cannot stay there and just say, oh, I wanna to move to my highest timeline. Because what happens is you have tendrils and cords and webbing pulling you down to these lower timelines where you have unfinished business. So if you have repentance or unforgiveness or you know whatever it is, going on there, baggage, things that you tried to, to dust under the rug and ignore and not confront. As much as you wanna stay above at the higher timelines, you're going to keep getting pulled down until you confront your darkness, your inner shadow energy, and then work through it, integrate it, release it. And once that comes falls away, you can stay and maintain a higher timeline. I will say this for some people really struggling right now because I know a lot of people are going through some major shifts in your relationships, in your jobs, in your families, maybe even where you live, just it feels like turmoil. You're most likely pulled, you might be at a lower timeline right now. There's some things you need to work through. However, once you work through them, your new timeline could look completely different than what you're in right now. You might have a new place where you live. Maybe it's more sustaining, more vibe, like it's going to give you a higher vibration. You will get to have what you've been desiring. Maybe you have a different job on a higher timeline that is more life-giving, more supportive. It doesn't have negative toxic people or situations in it. I hate to say this, but I talked about this before with biblically, it says mother may turn against daughter, father against son, families may be in turmoil. Your high, new highest timeline may not have the same 
family or friendship dynamics because some of those people are very toxic. They are choosing to stay on this very low timeline. And if you choose to stay with them, you have to lower yourself to that timeline. So we cannot help others when we are in the pit with them. So our best thing that we can do to assist others is get to our highest timeline, do our inner work, shadow work that we have to do, inner child work, ancestral work, whatever it is, rise up and then hopefully they will see us and choose to come up with us. We cannot force them. We can never make anyone change or force them to do anything, which is unfortunate. So in this, when I was talking about grief, grief might be letting go of specific family members, jobs, patterns that you've had for 20 years, and you know inside in your spirit that you need to let it go. And so yes, it's normal to experience grief with that, it's okay, it's a normal process. So don't ignore that grief healing cycle as you're going through these shifts and changes. If you're on the path of light and you're integrated into the light though, your future should be brighter. It should, we should be you know, starting to come out of the fog, the womb energy, it's very black and dark. And then there's like this tunnel of light and then they come out and it's like, whoa, what did I get myself into? I wanna go back into the darkness because we're not quite prepared for the light, yet we make it work and we start getting integrated and then we adjust. So it is not necessarily an easy process. Let me see if I had any questions. You have any questions for me? Barbie, you said gardens are a pharmacy. Yes, they are. I love the medical medium because he teaches you that food is your medicine. So many people say, again, oh, he says he's a medium. How horrible. That's, that's horrible. It's called activity. Um, he tells you to use food, the creation of our source creator, like for healing. He's not telling you to use harmful drugs that are full of aborted babies and poison. He's saying, go out to your garden and pick a carrot. Go eat some pineapple. Go eat some parsley. Make yourself a smoothie that's going to give you life. It's going to be light and fresh. Raise the vibration of your body. Help you push out the dark energy, low, the toxins that are in you. So remember that food is medicine. So much of what we've been taught is so wrong. If we want to find the light, if we want to raise our vibration, pretty much everything you know they're telling us, like through this whole pandemic, did they once tell you to go get sun and exercise and eat healthy? No, it was lock yourself away from the sun, restrict your breathing, take toxic concoctions, and hide away from people. It's like the exact opposite of what we should be doing if we want true health and vitality. And we are told that this vessel is our temple and we should be taking care of it. Yet our grocery stores have a tiny little section called health food. What is the rest of it? If it's not health, what's the opposite of health? Sickness, death food? And it's addictive and it's full of chemicals and it's, so we need to start stepping out of the indoctrination. Yes, you will see all the ads, all the cartoons, everything around us, eat this toxic food, go to this toxic place, do this toxic activity, ignore your inner self, just focus on the physical, expect a savior, to come and like save you without you doing any personal work at all. Then we find ourselves stuck and full of darkness and getting pulled down. I'm sorry, you have to do the work. It's not somebody waves a magic wand and boom, yep, you're clear, you don't have to even do anything at all, which I think is a lie of the church. They don't go out and say that exactly but they say, like, if you say this little prayer on my card here, you repeat after me, you're done, you're saved. That's all you needed to do. And then people go through their lives still feeling empty and they are struggling really bad. You might have some uplifting times, but they're really struggling. Wondering why, because I was told that this was the answer to everything. When the answer all along was to go within, face your darkness, face your demons, face your past life traumas, face your ancestral traumas, face your, face your inner child, 
experiences. All of us have trauma from inner childhood. I'm sorry, you do, we all do. Parents, I know it's hard to think about that for your children, but it's part of being in this human three-dimensional low vibration experience. So that's all I wanted to share today. Hope this is helpful. Again, please share some of your symptoms. If you have any help or insights for others, that would be you know awesome for you to share too. And take care of yourself this weekend. Take it easy if you can take some baths, go on some walks, connect with nature, eat light. I say this a lot. Drink lots of water, herbal teas that are going to be supportive of your digestion, whatever it is that you need, and feel led to. I often say, like, go within, and what is it that resonates within you? What are you feeling drawn to right now? I was feeling like I needed to eat curry, like a spicy, it wasn't really spicy, but just that warming curry the last couple days. So I've been eating it for three days. We need to start listening to our bodies. So much of the world has taught us to ignore that. But the answers lie within because where, who is the temple? We are called that this is the vessel, this is the temple, and where does the source creator reside? In our soul. So we need to start connecting within for the truth, not relying on false news, all these other distractions to tell us how it is and what we should be doing with our lives. If it doesn't feel right, use that gut intuition, instinct and in your intuition. If it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't give you peace, there's probably a reason for that. It's not compatible with your soul. So I hope that you understand what I'm sharing today. I'm not passing any judgment. I'm just trying to share truth and guidance. If I can assist you and guide you through this, give you some encouragement that you're doing great. Um, we're all in this together. There's no escaping it. Either you're going up or you're going down. There's going to be no middle ground left because as I read in Revelation 21, the first heaven in the first earth disappeared. So if you're building your life, your fortune, your grounding on this current 3D matrix earth, you're going to be left behind. We need to disconnect from this, the things of this earth, and start putting our eyes on the light, to the, the heavenly path, the path of enlightenment, the path to connect with our source creator again. And I think that's why we're here. For soul, it's earth school, for soul lessons, and growth to learn how to be one with one another again and one with the earth, one with creation. We've been so disconnected and told so many lies. It's time for us to come out of the lies and the fog, lift the veil and step into the truth and the light. Let everything be, stand up to the refining fire. I love to work with the refining fire. It's the pure white flame of our source creator. If it is not pure, as in refining of the gold or you know other metals, it burns away. And so all that is not pure will be burned away. All of those who think you're going to hide out in the caves of this old 3D earth are going to be burned away. But what comes after the refining fire? The restoring waters. The living waters. They come to restore us. We're no longer parched. We're no longer going through the refining process. We are restored and brought back to vitality. So there is a restoration story for you here. We are moving back to that place of vitality connection with source where we are full of hydration, renewed on all levels. We're moving there, but it's a process and you can't skip the process. I'm sorry, I wish I could tell you a different way, but we can't. So thanks for tuning in. Share with a friend if you felt this was helpful. And I will I go live every Monday if you want to catch me for quantum healing stuff. And if I feel like I have any other updates, I will. I hope to share some, some on one of my past lives that is really, really interesting. Um, it's quite horrifying on some levels, but it's it's fascinating on other levels. And to have people from that I didn't even know talk to me about this years ago that planted that seed that you know, maybe you had a past life as this. And I was like, what? I've never even heard of this. So it's all coming together. And I see the synchronicities coming together. I say that there's no coincidences at all. If you feel like things are just happening to you and you're a victim and it's just a coincidence, I'm sorry, our source creator 
and this divine orchestration of events is happening for a reason. And so be open to that and flow with everything coming in. Thanks again and have a wonderful um, cleansing time. I know you're like, it's not gonna be wonderful. Do the best you can, okay? You're doing great.